here it is. September 1988. It is the start of the fall semester at the University of California, Davis, where Cheryl Welch is beginning life as a law student. I grew up in Sacramento, California. I was a receptionist at Kaiser Hospital for 10 years. I decided that I wanted to go back to school, so I went to UC Davis. But as her studies get underway, things change. I know what normal life is, and life became very abnormal. It starts with her telephone. Usually you pick up a phone, you hear dial tone. But my phone, there would be click noises. There'd be a long pause, then static. She has it checked, but the strange noises continue. Cheryl becomes concerned. It's the first of many appliances that behave erratically in her presence. Things in my environment, all of the electrical equipment didn't work anymore. My computer, my TV. Her unease grows as she discovers it's not only machines that act strangely around her. Police cars started to follow me. I had a rock thrown at my car. Somebody tried to drive me off the road. I mean, I've never had a ticket. I've never taken drugs. People in my environment were acting out of character. I was acting my normal self. And people were acting weird. People turned against me. People would stare at you. Students would swear and spit on me. Weirder still, random strangers on the street seem to know exactly what she's thinking. I felt like I was surveilled. I thought somebody could read my thoughts. Cheryl's personal life falls apart as friends and family drift away. Then, she's fired from her job. It was like shock and awe. For three years, it was like that. And I realized, you know, this wasn't going to go away, despite my best efforts. That was a really depressing, blackest moment of my life. I just cried and cried and cried. I thought, why not just end it? Fearing for her sanity, Cheryl seeks help. So I went to my advisor, and I was having trouble academically, and he helped me get through this, and um, he was the only one that believed me. Her advisor comes to a quick conclusion. Cheryl is the victim of deliberate and organized campaign of harassment. But who is behind it? First, we checked out. We thought, maybe there's a psychology experiment. They're trying to stress you out. There was no psychology experiment. So I hired private investigators, and I tried to figure out if there were any bugs in my apartment. Nothing. And talking to my advisor, we both figured only the government would have the kind of, this kind of control over your telephone or what you did in the privacy of your apartment. Deciding to investigate, Cheryl gains access to government documents. They reveal the unthinkable. A top-secret experiment is subjecting everyday citizens to mind control. Major countries have developed this secret mind control technology, especially Russia and the United States. She's convinced the people who harassed her were under mind control and didn't even know it. Somebody is making them do things, you know, against without their knowing it. But why choose Cheryl? You're going to need to experiment on a lot of people. You can't do it ethically, so you're going to do it covertly, you know. She thinks she knows what put her on the government's radar. Before I went to UC Davis, I went to the Army recruiting office. I filled out the forms. I put in my application, but I went to UC Davis instead. And then after that was when this happened. After networking with other victims, they have that connection. Former people who applied to the CIA, former people who have relatives in the, in the government or the CIA, are often targets. Are the minds of innocent citizens being controlled by government-sanctioned experiments? Is Cheryl Welch telling the truth, or are her claims absurd? Just another conspiracy theory that's impossible to prove. Maybe. But not if you listen to Nick Begich. I think there's um, some, some good evidence that uh, Cheryl Welsh and many of the other people I've spoken with um, have been victimized by this electromagnetic mind control experiments. The weapons of this century aren't bombs and bullets and ordnance, but electromagnetic energy targeting the human being, which is a greatest revolution in military affairs um, since gunpowder. Baggage is an expert in government mind control. He is convinced the Pentagon has mastered a technology once thought to be science fiction. The ability to broadcast information directly into the human brain.
Our government began spending a lot of time looking at how to modify uh, behavior of human beings. And going back to the Korean War, in fact, in um, a publication, uh, Low Intensity Conflict in Modern Technology, they have a chapter on electromagnetic weapon systems, being able to not just to debilitate someone, but actually even to stimulate certain activities within the brain. But how? HARP is a, the high frequency active auroral research project, which started its joint effort of the Air Force and Navy. This is a very large array or field uh, of antennas uh, based in Alaska, radio frequency antennas. HARP antennas transmit powerful radio signals into the upper atmosphere to study the effects on wireless communications. But Begich says HARP can also be used for more sinister ends. HARP has um, announced several other um, programs and campaigns, and there's two areas that I got very concerned about. One was weather modification applications. The other was the effect on human beings. If you can modulate a signal that, that the brain locks onto, recognizes, and, and begins to mirror or, or follow the frequency following response, the brain rhythms change, then it creates a chemical cascade within the brain and the emotions change. Now the resolution gets finer and finer and finer. And it used to just to be about triggering emotions. You could change people's brain chemistry pretty readily, change their emotional state pretty easily. But when you get down to the idea of thoughts and being able to manipulate those, that requires much a different kind of sophistication. Can we hear sounds without using our ears? Not only is it possible, says Begich, he can prove it using sound recordist Brad Daw. So what I'm going to demonstrate is a um, earth pulse sound wave. And what this is, is an infrasound device. It's just a small electronic circuit that we run a CD player playing some Bach into our circuit and then comes out through two piezoelectric transducers. So I'm going to place these transducers on, on your face. You're going to Bach your ears tightly. We put those in contact with the skin and listen. Yeah. So what do you hear? I hear the music, yeah, loudly. Right in the center of their forehead, inside their head, they'll hear Bach, just like they would with their ears, but the ears aren't involved. It wasn't through my ears at all. It was basically, uh, it felt like kind of it was coming from the middle of my head, no direction, and uh, it was clear. So not through my ears at all, which is pretty cool. Now we can do this wirelessly with microwave. So there's lots of ways to do it, and this just gives a very simple sort of uh, workbench model that gives the principle so people can understand, yeah, you can really do it. Don't you just love death, man? I gotta head back a little more. Now this is a fascinating theory. There's just one problem. I'm not sure these piezoelectric transducers are gonna catch on as a fashion accessory. And frankly, I don't even know what piezoelectric means. But if we're to believe baggage, the government don't even need these. They're tapping directly into our minds, controlling us with powerful, invisible microwaves that can alter the very way we think and act, making us believe anything they want us.